Welcome to the Jordan and Kristen Rickard Show. The world is falling apart, but you don't have to. Join Jordan and Kristen as they discuss the challenges that face us in our decaying world every day. God has a plan for you to have victory and to be a light in the darkness. As the Bible says, those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Now, here's Jordan and Kristen. All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Jordan and Kristen Pray For You. We hope you're having uh, a great start to your week. Happy Monday for those of you uh, in the Western Hemisphere, and happy Tuesday morning for everybody else. I want to talk um, briefly tonight about a very important topic as pertains to relationships. So this is going to be part of our relationship series, and that's the importance of never asking your partner to be less than what they are. And I'm going to relate this also to our relationship with God. But in your personal relationship with your partner, your girlfriend, your wife, whatever, you can't ever ask her to be less than what she is. I don't know that women have the same problem with men. I think a lot of times when I see women, um, they they sometimes delude themselves into thinking that their husband or boyfriend is something other than what they are. Okay, but they don't try to like bottle them up as much. But I think a lot of times men will try to bottle up women a lot. And they'll, you know, they want them to just fill, fulfill a certain role and put them on a shelf and say, that's what you are. Don't be more than that. And I think some of them feel threatened by it. You know, some of them in particular, I think, feel threatened by uh, a woman who's ambitious, who might outpace them, be more successful, who, um, who might be more intelligent, can speak for herself, that sort of thing. You know, you see me with this beautiful specimen over here to my left and I, I am listen I will be the first to tell you I'm the most blessed person in the world to have her but I'm also going to tell you that very few other men could be with someone of Kristen's caliber because they would try to bottle her up okay one of the things I told Kristen early on in our relationship because I think you had said something and you you said don't well you know I can tone it back or don't worry about it or like you know because she has a very big personality in front of other people and I said Listen, I don't ever want you to tone it down. I don't ever want you to be less than what you are. I want you always to be the most of what you are. Okay. That's, that's what I love about you. I don't want, I, I'm not trying to change you to fit my mold. In fact, what I love about you is that you don't have a mold. You just, just fill up this enormous space. And so I told Kristen, I will never ask you to be less than what you are. And I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of guys could not handle someone like Kristen. A lot of guys would just, you know, not not understand your ambitions. Um, they'd feel threatened by you know your intelligence and your outspokenness. They wouldn't know what to do with your vulnerability with with each other. You know, there's just so many things about you, and and they would just want to fit you into a box. And I just decided early on, no, that that defeats the purpose. Like Kristen's so great, I don't want her to fit into a little box. I want her just to spread her wings and fly. Okay. Well, here's the thing. It's the same thing with God, and this is I'm telling you this because I had to learn this lesson myself. One of the mistakes we make is we think that when we transition from being a worldly person to a Christian, that God asks, God wants to put us in a box and ask us to be less than what we are. Okay. I face this because I'm involved in politics and there are times that I really feel like I could very easily make fun of an opposing person. And I tell myself, you know, I have this great gift for it. I could really, you know, cut this person up if I want to. I could really, you know, post something really funny about this person. Everybody would think I'm so clever and would get a cheap laugh, that kind of thing. But I feel like, no, 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 I can't do that now. I'm a Christian. And for, and by the way, I'm also a teacher. And the Bible says that teachers are actually held to a higher standard. And the and the instinct might be to say, well, gosh, I'm, I have this talent and God doesn't want me to use it, even though I could. You can convince yourself, by the way, you can you can misuse that stuff for the kingdom of God. And like, well... This person over here is a bad person. If I'm making fun of them and taking cheap shots at them, I'm beating that person and therefore I'm advancing the kingdom. And here God wants me not to make fun of these people. He wants me to not use this talent. Ah, that's the lie. Because what's actually happening is not that I have a gift for making fun of other people. I don't have a gift for tearing people apart and, 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 and reducing them and blowing them up and stuff like that. Actually, I have a gift for a lot of other things. And what happens is I was misusing that gift, mm -hmm. okay, to do things with it that I shouldn't do, even if I was able to rationalize it. All right. And so what God will do is he's not going to ever ask you not to use your gift, but he might show you what your real purpose with that gift was. Your purpose wasn't to misuse it. Okay. To gratify the flesh. Okay. Your purpose was to use it 
to fulfill God's kingdom, fulfill he, what he has of you. And so the same talents that I was misusing to maybe, you know, have some witty remark about someone else that was, you know, designed to cut that person down. Instead, I can use that to develop a, a more intelligent thought, a more persuasive thought, and be above the fray and really elevate myself or really more accurately let God elevate me through using my talents, okay? So here's the thing. Here's what I'm telling you. In any relationship, okay, no one, no relationship is successful if one side is trying to bottle the other side up. And it's not different with God. God will never try to bottle you up, but he will ask you to shed off some of the weights that are holding you back, okay, so that you can reach the fullness of your potential, so you can maximize all that talent that he trusted you with. And it's no different in your personal relationships. God has given me this amazing gem of a woman. She's so ridiculously talented. She is this is, you probably don't realize this girl got into Yale here. Okay. You could, this is a real privilege to be with just this intellectual heavyweight. And I have told her from day one, I never want you to be less than what you are. I always just want you to grow. And I want to be there always supporting you and helping you grow. Okay, guys. And that's one of the keys to having a successful relationship. That's my message for you today. Wow. Wow. <laughs> well, that was quite a honor to hear all that. And um, I always say, that's when you know you have a strong man who's secure in what he has going on to be able to shine on his the woman in his life and everybody, everybody who's around you, around your space feels that. I mean, you're so humble about things being, <laughs> we could go on and on about your accolades, which <laughs> I know this is not what the episode is about, but obviously um, you you definitely don't, to, he, to hear those compliments from, from you are, are very awesome because of everything you've accomplished and not just in in life but um spiritually in every single way so i'm really grateful for the way you make me feel like i can be who god created me to be absolutely that's and my job as your husband you, baby you do such a great job of that and i'm just so blessed by that because i feel then i can do the best in supporting you and um you know this would be a whole another sermon but i I mentioned to you the one day, and I think a lot of women struggle with the, the verses about submit to your husband. And when you have a man who wants to give you the ability to just do what God has created you to do, it's not difficult. It's actually a joy to submit to your husband. And it's the same thing about submitting to God and his His ways. Because you're right, God doesn't want to bottle you up. God doesn't want to, um, you know, kind of silence you. And I think that's Sometimes the culture of a lot of Christians is, you know, there's even a verse in the Bible that says, in quietness and trust shall be your strength. And as a person who is not that quiet, <laughs> I was like, what? No. But it means peace. And there are times, trust me, that even I can believe it or not can be quiet, which is few and far between. But there are times to be quiet. I'm not saying that. But quiet spirit is peace. You can be loud and have the peace of God. And have that quiet spirit. So I am so blessed to have this man that I get to marry because um, I think everyone knows how amazing you are as in, in politics and in your professional life as a lawyer and and in your spiritual growth and, and all the accolades that you have. I mean, this we're looking at a super lawyer here. He is he has his superhero cape and you know, we all know he's a genius in Mensa and all these other wonderful things. But more than all of that. Is his heart for God. I told him that as a the man after God's own heart. That's what he has that that makes everything else function and everything. Well, you're right because there are a lot of people who are very intelligent and very educated and all those things, and a lot of them a never meet their potential. I think it was Calvin Coolidge who said, you know, the, there's few things more common than people with talent who never use it, mm. never use it correctly, or worse, they use it for the wrong thing. It's you know, it's great to have. Uh, an immense amount of horsepower in your engine, but God is God has got to be the one who's stealing, steering the car. Yeah, yeah. That's a trick to it. I appreciate all of that, and I appreciate the way you make me feel like I can thrive. And and by the way, I'm not a person that goes around making fun of people all the time. That's no, not no, it. no. You have to understand, though, American politics, first of all, has become a joke. Okay, yeah. it's very easy to make fun of our politicians, and unfortunately, you know, it's become sort of the preferred um, method of discourse. It's like if you can make the make fun of the other person and belittle them, then you've won the argument because they're stupid and you're not. And it would be very 
easy for me to do that and, and do it even better than a lot of people. But, um, I feel like I would just be just like spitting on, on God's gift mm-hmm. for me. And, and there's plenty of other people doing that. So what's the point? Yeah. Right. And you are like the sweetest man. This right here is like the sweetest heart. So yeah, God's heart right there. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, just before you do your prayer, as far as, you know, what Kristen said about wives submitting to your husbands, we've talked before about how that's one of the most misunderstood verses in the Bible. And, and I think also flagrantly misused verses in the Bible. We did another sermon on that several right. months ago. Uh, so I would recommend that you go watch it if you're interested in that. But ba- the basic thesis of it is you're cutting out the other half of it. It's that the Bible says, wives submit to your husbands. But right after that it says, husbands love your wives like Christ loved the church. And the Bible tells us Christ loved the church as a servant. And so what it's really saying is both of you guys should be serving one another. Yes, the wife should submit to her husband, but the husband needs to be the servant of the wife. It's it, The idea is both of you put the other person ahead of yourselves and put the relationship ahead of yourselves, okay? And that when you're both selfless people thinking of the other person, mm-hmm. that's how you build a successful relationship. That's so that's good. That's what it means. And this is why I'm marrying this guy. <laughs> one of the many reasons. Thank you. <laughs> I just can't believe it. I'm like, oh, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. Can I get to know you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have your number? I do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you for how you don't want to make us less of ourselves, but in becoming more of you, Lord, we were made in your image. You take off all that was that the enemy just put on us, any any garbage or junk or things, Lord, you you tear all that away and you give more of yourself to us. You created us. You're a creative God. Every single person is uniquely created to worship you and 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 just be bathe in your glory. And Lord, as we as we become more like you, we become more at peace and we step into the greatness that you have for us, God. I pray that every person listening will realize their unique, beautiful, valuable thumbprint on this earth, will realize how much you love them and how much you want to just open your doors and the great, beautiful purpose you have. But I feel there are so many people right now feeling like there's no open doors and their future is just kind of, you know, with the pandemic and everything, I know it kind of put people into his tailspin. And so they they feel like, oh, where's my future going? Where's my life going? God wants to show you that he has so much for you. He has so much. Your dreams, the dreams that God put in your heart are not on hold. He's developing something in you and, and using that for his glory. And in that quietness and that trust and that strength you're going to find in him, to step forward into the arena he has for you, into the destiny he has for you. And no pandemic can delay that, can delay God's plans. God uses things, but it cannot be delayed. Your destiny cannot be delayed. So God, bring each person into the perfect will you have for them. Show them that you have a plan and a beautiful plan, not a a plan B, but a plan God. And, And show them who you are, God. Be real to them. God, show us who you are. Become real to us. Become crystal clear. Let us hear your voice better than ever before, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Great job. Thanks, honey. We just have three prayer requests tonight. We have uh, Margaret asks us to pray for her marriage. Jonathan um, says, you guys are so blessed. Uh, I would love to be blessed in that way with a a life partner. So we're going to pray for Jonathan. And uh, he's from the UK, so that's cool. And um, Samina Simon is from Pakistan, says, pray for me. A doctor says for an x-ray, um, just pray that m- my report is clear. So, Lord, we lift up Margaret and Jonathan and Samina to you. It's interesting to me that these are three different areas of prayer, but they're all important to you. One is not more important than the other, and they're all areas, God, that you want to f- to flow and they're all needs that we have, God. For, for Margaret, I just pray healing over her marriage, Lord. I've seen so many things, so many examples of restoration, God. 
how it's never too late to restore. So God, I pray for restoration for her marriage, God. I pray that you would come and you would be the center of this marriage and and put it back on the footing that it's supposed to be on and make it better than it's ever been before. And all the people, I pray for people to speak into their lives and be able to mediate and um, be able to have lasting friendships and mentors. And I just pray that you would restore it, Lord. And and I pray for Jonathan. I pray for that um, the person that he's supposed to be with would come into his life. I pray if there's anything that he needs to to do or to become more spiritually mature in advance of meeting this person, Lord, that that you do that work in him. And that as he trusts you and lays it at at your feet, God, that you bring that person into his life. Show him uh, what action to take and show him, Lord, what to do to um, move forward. But God, also as he trusts you, God, you you bring things. I'm, you know, Jordan and I have seen that in in our, you know, in the way we met. God, you bring things in amazing ways, amazing, miraculous ways. We pray for that miracle in his life. And we pray for Samina, Lord. I pray for a clean bill of health. I pray for totally, totally restoration. Heal her completely. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Great job, baby. Can you close this out? Yes. If you'd like to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is the perfect opportunity, so just follow after me. Dear Jesus, I admit that I have sinned. I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I make you my Lord and Savior. And I will follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, we're so excited for you. Send us a message or you can also uh, comment on the video. Hmm. That was a good episode. I hardly did any of the talking this episode. I did like 20% of it. Oh, did you want to talk more? No, it was good. Oh, I liked what you were talking about. Yeah, yeah, I liked that. It was good. It was good. It just kind of went. It just kind of went that way. You, you were talking about some good things. So, yeah. yeah, that's why I got to take the rest of the episode off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's fine. <laughs> hey guys, listen. We hope you enjoyed the episode. Remember to like and share the videos, and uh, check out some of the other ones. I think we have close to like 130 of them on the page now. So we hope you're getting something out of these. Have a great rest of your week. We'll see you again Friday, 7:30 Eastern Standard Time. In the meantime, as always, be blessed and be a blessing. Bye. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to follow Jordan and Kristen Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and iTunes. And remember to tune in next week and every week on Tuesdays at 845 on WMCA The Mission, AM 570 and FM 102.3. Amazing grace.